this experience. Today, finally, is the day that Germany reunifies. Now, I worry about this because whenever I meet individual Germans, they never seem at all chastened by history. They still seem to think that they are part of an innately superior nation, despite the fact that they're all really ugly, and the only good band they've ever produced is Boney M, <laughs> who themselves were hardly a product of Aryan genetic engineering. <laughs> still, the new Germany is, I understand, to have a new name, which is interesting because, like, Germany's always been keen on offering its neighbours a new name. Germany. <laughs> I'm David Baddiel, and this is Punt and Dennis. Yes, today effectively is the day that the Second World War finally finishes. Just in time for the third one to break out. And, and where are the Germans 50 years on? In the desert, in tanks. This time, of course, they are part of the Western Alliance, and you can easily tell the German tanks they're the ones that always, always start, start first thing in the morning. I mean, they're, they're just incredibly reliable. <laughs> and of course, you can always tell the British tanks, they're the ones being driven by the Iraqis. <laughs> to reassure anybody who is still worried about the new United Germany, they've also kindly rewritten the words of their national anthem. Deutschland, Deutschland, Uber, nobody. <laughs> Now, at this point, we must say that on this subject, we wouldn't wish to be associated with the views of Nicholas Ridley. No, because Nicholas Ridley is so patently an arsehole. The sort of man who, when you see him, like, in a hard hat on a building site, you think, oh, he looks a bit of an arsehole in that hat. And then you realise, it's not the hat. <laughs> the new Germany, of course, promises to follow the spirit of the new barrier-free United Europe, a spirit which has also been demonstrated admirably recently by French farmers. The government have decided that they're fed up with our land being attacked on its way through France. The next batch of British sheep are going in there prepared. <laughs> Still, we do get our own back. For instance, the BBC has sold Allo Allo to French television. <laughs> which is a bit like selling Midnight Express to the Turkish Tourist Board. <laughs> Crime Stoppers would like to hear if anyone has been trying to sell you one of these car stereos. How much were they asking? £60? £70? It may sound too good to be true, but be advised. You can get them from me for 30 quid. <laughs> tonight have got here by various means, including uh, one man who appears to come direct from Shenley by dial ride but unfortunately <laughs> no one has come by the first form of transport we're going to look at in the transport experience, the seesaw hand-operated railway trolley, <laughs> as used by Lauren Hardy, and now an integral part of the government's plans for privatising the railway. <laughs> then there is the bus. Certainly in a busy city centre, there's no vehicle better equipped for nipping through the rush hour traffic than a 200-ton diesel-powered traction engine. In major cities, there are also night buses which never arrive. Now, in London, night buses leave from Trafalgar Square, which is why it's always so packed by the end of the year. <laughs> and there are certain things you will always hear while waiting for public transport. Waiting for a bus, someone will always say, Oh, you wait for ages, and then four come at the same time. Waiting for a train, someone will always say, <laughs> Typical British word. <laughs> and of course, on the underground, someone will always say, Fire! Fire! <laughs> so your best bet, contrary to all environmental considerations, is to travel by car. And an indispensable aid to getting around in your car is the A to Z. All city street finders are called the A to Z, except Bay Roots, which is called the A to B. <laughs> Apart from these, there is also the Nicholson street finder. Huh? Uh, I gotta tell you guys, I don't know where the <laughs> I am. <laughs> I ground that got lost as well. Now, cars, are, cars, of course, are very dangerous, and from an early age, we are taught road safety. Now, this used to be in the form of the curb drill, which was very easy to remember. It went, look right, look left, look right again, and if nothing's coming, you obviously don't live in London. <laughs> the other problem with cars is that they go wrong, and you have to go to the garage. And there, car mechanics always mystify the process of fixing your car. I mean, especially if it's foreign. If your car is anything except a Ford Granada, you might as well be asking them to fix the Arkansas Chuggerbug. <laughs> but as we all know from watching Grand Prix, a car can go into the pits on fire and be back on the track in seconds. And in the last lap of the British Grand Prix, Alain Prost has built 
up a lead of over 14 seconds over Ayrton Senna. So surely now the championship is in the bag as he goes into the pits for his last pit stop. Vint, Vint, complete tyre change and all in the turbo shaft. Sorry, mate, there's no way I'll fit you in today. <laughs> Well, I'll tell you what, I might have it done for you Thursday. Leave the keys, give us a ring around lunch. What? Hurry up, you stupid man! I've already lost five seconds to Senna! Trouble is, you see, these just aren't built for speed. <laughs> not built for speed. What you want is a four Granada. <laughs> In fact, I'll tell you what. And Ayrton Senna has taken the lead, but now out of the pits, here comes Alain Prost in a Ford Granada gear. The one they bought off me for 20 quid. And it's now it's Senna in the McLaren with turbocharge and Frost in the Granada gear with the mock leather steering wheel cover and the cassette player that does not work. <laughs> What of the future? Well, probably the biggest transport project at the moment is the Channel Tunnel. But unfortunately, the Channel Tunnel has run out of money. Now, most people's reaction to this is obviously, ha 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 ha, we never wanted the bloody thing anyway. <laughs> but, uh, but uh, obviously, this is not the view of those more deeply involved. For a more in-depth analysis, our political correspondent. Reaction at Westminster to the news of the financial difficulties for the tunnel project was mixed. But the general reaction seemed to be, ha-ha-ha-ha! <laughs> we never wanted the bloody thing anyway. But the Channel Tunnel will get built. After all, when it comes to tunneling difficulties, they've never daunted the British before. Everybody, money or no money, I want these tunnels finished by the night of the 13th. Who's with us? Danny, Hiltz, Colin. Let me come with you. <laughs> I can say, I can say perfectly. <laughs> the amazing thing about the Channel Tunnel is how on earth we ever persuaded the French to build a tunnel with us in the first place. Let's face it, our record on subterranean transport systems is not good. This is the Channel Tunnel Line Information Service. Malheureusement, il y a un failure de point. Uh, Calais, jusqu'à Tottenham Court Road. OC, il n'y a pas de escalators. Uh, Calais, donc il faut utiliser les stairs. Merci. <laughs> I'd like now to do a reading from Heathcote Williams' classic conservation poem, Whale Nation. Now, those of you who are already familiar with this poem may perhaps notice that I've taken the liberty of adding one or two of my own lines here or there, but I trust you agree with me that this doesn't interfere with the poem's original meaning in any way. Whale Nation. Out of the body of one whale is made oil, jewellery, clothes, medicine, soap, furniture, cosmetics and ornaments. What a bog! <laughs> Try getting all that lot out of a panda. <laughs> say what really constitutes perversion. I mean, for me, the man who sits on a vibrating love egg in an inflatable body stocking is less perverted than Robert Robinson's wife. I mean, Jesus, the fact that Robert Robinson is married means that someone actually exists who watches Call My Bluff and thinks, oh, sit on that. Well, next week on Sex Talk, we'll be looking at those types of sexuality that have always been considered criminal, such as bestiality. Now, in terms of crime solving, this one is obviously a lot more difficult than most because usually it's rather difficult for the animal to report the crime. <laughs> Except in very unusual cases. Up is a devil, up is a devil, it was terrible, up is a devil. Oh, please, one of his rings, or very cute. We have his hands. I knew I shouldn't go around wearing just a waistcoat. This sort of thing was bound to happen. <laughs> Well, I'm sorry, PC. Next time I'll use some KY jelly. <laughs>
Beyond bestiality, there are also people who go to the zoo and get turned on by watching the animals mating. Well, certainly this is more cost-effective than going to any other type of sex show. I mean, at least while you're standing there waiting for the gorillas to get randy, Johnny Morris doesn't come out and say, You've got to buy a drink now. It costs 15 pounds. <laughs> The day's top stories, United Amalgamated bid for Consolidated Incorporated. Incorporated United in leveraged buyout struggle and Amalgamated Consolidated offer a second right to shoe ahead of half-year profit announcement. Later on, we'll be asking, who gives a toss? <laughs> also, John Major says we are not heading for a recession. He also says he met Elvis at the deli counter in Tesco. <laughs> but now, the financial news roundup. What happened in the market today? Well, in the market today, I got some dodgy cassettes for $1.99. Uh, the sound quality is crap, but they were cheap. Now, some company results announced today. ICI 2, Chelsea nil, and Walsby British Gas is a late kickoff. Now, a look at today's markets in detail. Well, shares rose on opening, but slipped back mid-morning when supply figures were released, rising again strongly before lunch on the rumour that there was lasagna on the menu in the canteen. <laughs> News that a man had fallen off a bus in Gloucestershire sent dealers into panic selling, and when Jeremy at Hambrose remembered he'd forgotten to set the video for Inspector Morse, the market collapsed completely. <laughs> Later on in the programme, we'll be discussing personal savings. How can you best invest £1,000? Should you put it in a high-yield capital growth account, purchase a personal equity plan, or buy a gallon of four-star? <laughs> we'll also be asking, how can you get a guaranteed overdraft? The answer, of course, is spend more money than you've got in your bank account. <laughs> Good night. Now, Crime Stoppers would like to hear from you if you can answer any of the following questions. Were you in the Sydenham area last Wednesday night? Did you talk to a man in a blue anorak? Do you know the way to San Jose? <laughs> if you think I'm sexy and you want my body, come on, honey, tell me so. If you really need me, just reach out and touch me and you could win a Community Action Trust reward. <laughs> With the Birmingham Six appeal about to start, we thought it was about time a programme took an in-depth look at the history of the Irish conflict. How did it all start? Well, some historians arbitrarily date the war from the potato famine of 1841, during which time the Irish people were enraged by the incomprehension of English aristocrats. Well, perhaps there are no potatoes, but you know, have they never heard of pasta? <laughs> or tzatziki? I mean, get me over there, I'll whip them up a light moussaka. <laughs> But what really upset the Irish at this stage, at the height of the potato famine, was the opening in Britain in 1893 of the first ever Spud You Like. <laughs> now, in the present day, amongst the blind passion and extreme opinion, one still small voice of calm is Ian Paisley's. Now, we all know about Ian Paisley the campaigner, but what I want to know is, how does the Reverend conduct his ordinary pastoral care? That'll be the minister now. Hello, Mrs. Williams! I was fond to hear about the death of your neighbour! Yes, well, we were all very fond of old Mr. Dog. Because I was hoping to get the pudding before he died, the dirty, fenian bastard! Well, 